What's good, y'all? Welcome back. You already know what it is. We're reacting to part two of Dale Earnhardt the day. Y'all killed yesterday's video for part one. I hear y'all. I know y'all commenting. Y'all want me to react to more NASCAR stuff. We going. I'm gonna get to as much NASCAR content as I can. Y'all just gonna have to give me time. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. But I'm gonna try to get to everything y'all want. Bear with me. Original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into it. EI was founded on family and friends with three teams starting the Daytona 500. Dale Jr., Steve Park, yeah, last and we left Walter, off, Dale Jr. won. A journeyman who'd never won a Dad race was in his 16-year career. <laughs> now, NASCAR's premier event would be his first race driving for his longtime friend. Just coming to my mom's house to see mom the day after my dad died. My phone rang and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm over here with mom, just hanging out. He said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. And he hadn't mentioned coming or anything, but he just, he wanted to come and uh, hold my mom's hand, you know, and just say, you're a, uh, you're a, uh, you had a special husband, you know, he raised these two boys and these guys are a big part of my life. And so uh, I think that meant the world to mom. And I think it uh, showed a lot of people in my world that uh, he was a special person. Maybe Earnhardt saw a friend who needed a helping hand, or maybe he saw something in Waltrip that others did not. Michael Waltrip. Screaming along the wall. Got a pin it right up against the wall. He hit awful hard. You know, I had started my engine 462 times and hadn't ever been able to win a race. That is Michael Waltrip. Oh, Out of control. Shit. Time was ticking. Time Fuck. was running out for me to be able to get a top ride. When Dale put Michael in the Napa car, and everybody said, have you lost your mind? He's driven 400 some races and had never won a race. Why do you think, why did you pick him? Dale always he knew saw something that Michael in him. could drive. That's why. And he always felt like he needed, just needed an opportunity. Back. That opportunity was at hand. One and opportunity well is all it takes. Good luck kisses For somebody that really wanted. Air. Engines were ready to start NASCAR's most important day. You're watching Fox Sports, home to the World Series, Super Bowl 36, and now the 43rd running of the great American race, the Daytona 500. It's like you get the NFL contract and your very first game is the Super Bowl. Hi everyone, Mike Joy with the 1989 winner. Yeah, of this race, that Darryl low key Walter, is uh, pretty fucking trying, insane to think. Larry McReynolds has been to victory lane in the 500 twice as a crew chief. Gentlemen, I firmly believe with us going on the Fox safety. network and with the amount of promotion we, we had done, that we were going to get a very broad audience. So that's why we'd spent so much time with the camera angles, why we'd spent so much time with the audio, so much time with the graphics, so that when the big audience was watching, they went, oh, I get it. It's not just a bunch of rednecks running around a track. This is really exciting. And it I is really exciting. In my head, Bill France Jr. saying to me, you've got to stress, this is a sport. And so we had to, to, to lay and out this wonderful almost definitely made this bitch a sport. why everyone had fallen in love with the sport and why they'd fallen in love with the sport were these daring young men who were going to risk everything for glory. I ain't even gonna lie to you, homie. Look, this thunder rose to life <laughs> as NASCAR the machines homie rolled that is off the starting car. grid. The day's events have been put into motion. Dale Earnhardt is the most prolific restrictor plate driver in NASCAR history. 11 wins and only 52 plate stars. Today, chasing his 35th total victory here in Daytona. 35. The plan was victories. simple. He said, "Me and you and Dale Jr. are going to work together and win this race." Thought sounds great, but it doesn't sound very realistic. There's 40 <clears> other cars <throat> that are going to try to be messing that whole plan up. At Daytona, you can plan who you want to run with and who you want to draft with, and then they wave the flag. This vehicle is in. The 43rd annual Daytona 500 is set to get underway. Terry Bradshaw waves the green flag. We're racing. When the race started, my car wasn't exactly right. It was loose, and so I needed to work on it. Look at Mikey. He's got a handful. That's what we call a handful. When you get the wheel pulled way around there like that, he's got a he's got a handful of steering wheel. I can't help but 
notice the front of the roof here on Earnhardt's car. It's like it's buffeting. It's because Rusty Wallace, the car in front of him, with that roof flap across the roof or that roof fan, it's putting dirty air, and it's making the air on Earnhardt's car mad. It don't know what to do. And here comes Earnhardt down the inside. Under Marlin, three wide through the trial. Look at him go. And he almost took the nose off Marlin's car coming back up. I believe Schrader led that lap. He did. Good man, Schrader. The first 150, 70 laps, basically, I, I saw him, but we really never, there's too many cars. We never could really get together and team up. Look at her. Should there be teams in the NASCAR? People really be teaming? Tommy Dale Stone, and Dale the lead, Jr. Though. got to the front in a hurry, and I, I, I kind of rode in the middle of the pack for longer than I wanted to. Then the crew made some adjustments and made my car right. I could drive the heck out of it. It's like a long trip up the middle. Hey, we had talked about off the mic all day, and there he is. Come on, buddy. Give me, give me a chance to talk about you. There's one time during the course of the race that all four of us were running one, two, three, four. Me, Dale Jr., Steve Park, and Dale. I apologize if I'm doing a, if I'm not doing a lot of commentary. I've been so many things in the last 25 laps. I wasn't thinking until the last couple laps and, and see what happens. You just try to position yourself up there where you're in that group and try to be able to make something happen, or if something happens, you can capitalize. On it. Oh shit! on the back straightaway that Fuck. began when Tony Stewart got turned sideways against the back stretch wall number 20. You know, it just seemed like this, the, the, the lid was about to bu bubble off of this pot here, and it just seemed like with that event, we thought maybe eliminated enough cars to make it come down to where we knew who we needed to race and how we were going to be able to accomplish this. Being in the midst of all that must have fucking sucked. Man, a lot of good cars, cars got taken out in that big crash. And so when the cars are stopped on the racetrack over on the back straightaway, not only are we catching our breath, but so are those guys. And, and, and at, at the same time, they're strategizing. We pulled to a stop uh, on the front straightaway, and um, I'll be darned. I looked in my mirror, and I was leading the race. Um, Dale and Dale Jr. were right behind me. Oh, wow. And I thought about his plan, you know. <laughs> I, was, I know he's a great race car driver and a champion, but this is crazy what he called out. How did that Gene happen? Sort of philosophic. He called it. was it. kind of strange because he, he got on the radio and told the crew, he says, no matter what else happens, he says, Let, let's be thankful because he said, we've had a, a great week, we've had a great race, and we're so lucky that we missed that crash. Man. I remember him coming on there. And Missing I that remember crash this really changed the game. Before the wreck happened or during the, call, the red flag, but he said, Richard, if they don't do something to these cars, it's going to end up killing somebody. It kind of always sticks. That's one of the things I can remember, and I don't remember if at what point he said that. Damn. But it was after Tony's wreck. Bro, it would it would cut off when it starts getting emotional. Whoever edited this knew what the fuck they were doing. God damn it. All right. So, based off of the ending statement that homie just made, he knew. It's like it's like he knew like something had to give, something had to change, something had to happen in order for them to be like, "Okay, we really need to like bring safety to be the top priority." for fucking nascar but i i'm sure deep down he didn't think that it would be him of all people um it's just crazy like he he called the race he and missing missing the crash is what got them together so it, it's just crazy it's like he just knows the sport way too fucking well like he he just knows it way too well but i hope y'all enjoyed the reaction i apologize if there wasn't a lot of commentary during the actual video i was really just tuned in but I hope y'all enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. Part three out tomorrow. Y'all gotta wait for it. And I'll see y'all next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. Back when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. Now nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.